Good morning. I tell you, it's, uh, if, if you haven't checked, it's summer outside. I'm, I just That was a news flash. I didn't want anybody not to know. But we're glad that you're here, glad that you're online with us this morning. I'm, I'm going to talk to you about something pretty interesting. You know, some of the things that we have difficult in our lives are th- things that we have done to ourselves. And sometimes the things that we find difficult in our lives are things that other people <laughs> have done to us and we haven't been able to get out of it. And so I want to talk to you today to how to get out of the prison that you and others have helped build for yourself. And a lot of it, listen to me, a lot of it is just the way we think. It got quiet. <laughs> That's really an important issue. And so, obviously, none of that can happen without the power of the Spirit of God. So, Holy Spirit, we put ourselves before you this morning, and we ask for you to come and tear apart things that have been built against us and put together the things that we need to have to be able to push back against the things that we face. We welcome you, and we thank you for being here. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me this morning? Mm-hmm. We lift our voice to you, Lord. Let's begin to lift our hearts to him. That could mean lifting your voice to him in worship. We welcome your presence in this place. Come and fill this place. Come and fill this space. We give ourselves to you, Jesus, in a new Welcome your presence, Lord. Come and fill this place. Come and fill this space. Come and fill our hearts today. We invite your presence, Holy Spirit. We've come gathered in your name. We've come gathered in your name.
physically, you know, be here as he was on the earth, we would expect that he would grant people release from the burden, burden of sin. We would believe that he would touch people because it just happened physically even as a manifestation of his kingdom. So Jesus, we just say we that you're here, you're present. You're present, hard for us to tap into, but really in a more incredible way than you were here when you were on the earth. So Lord, we just take off all limitations on you right now. Because we realize that you are here, and you're here in a more incredible way. You dwell within us. You come corporately. And your kingdom power and authority rest as we worship you. I believe the Lord would say, my kingdom and my authority is here to bring heaven's change. There's an inbreaking of his kingdom this morning. It breaks in. So let's just welcome it. Lord, we welcome that your power, your presence, your lordship. I believe there are some people here who have been condemning themselves, and I believe the Lord would just say, stop it. Stop it. Michelle, would you and Charles want to come, please? Ah, ladies first. Psalm 33 says, in the middle of it, it says, By the word of the Lord the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth all their host. By the breath of the breath of his mouth, all their host. The Lord put on my heart that word breath. You know, to get someone's breath, you have to be close to them. And there's several of us in here who are close to the Lord. But we need to ask the Lord to breathe on our friends and our families in this fellowship. Lord, we ask that you breathe upon those online. We ask that you breathe upon those in need 
in this sanctuary, Lord God. Come, Father God, breathe upon Harmony Vineyard Fellowship, Father God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Charles. Um, during the first song that we were singing about, mountains crumbling and the chains being broken, um, what I got was, it was, you know, the things in our lives that are holding us back, that are obstacles for us, things that we need to overcome are going to be crumbling. It could be finances, it could be relationships, it could be whatever, but I just saw those things crumbling and breaking and freeing us up and making it easier. And then the second one is the resurrection power in the name of Jesus. I mean, there's nothing more powerful than the name of Jesus. And, um, but that doesn't mean, just have to mean one thing of resurrection. It can mean the resurrection of many, many things. For us, a lot of what it was, was in our marriage years ago. God really resurrected that. It could be health. It could be finance. Again, it could be anything that God wants to resurrect in your life. But the word I really got about that was that it will not look the same as it did before. And God really said, I can guarantee you that Lazarus did not look the same after he came out of the grave as he did before they put him in. So, just... <laughs> Anyway. Amen. That's great. <laughs> you know, um, aren't you glad we're not wearing masks today? See, because if somebody can get close enough to you to breathe on you, you're going to get what they're carrying. And the Lord's presence is here, and He's close enough to breathe on you so you can get what he's carrying and when he says he gives life oh my gosh they just, they just numbered a whole bunch of issues that, but I'm telling you when he brings life you don't look like you did before he breathed on you breathe on this breath of God Consume God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you. Come and consume God, all we are. We give you permission. Our hearts are yours. We want you. We want you.
like sometimes you just inhale, so to speak, spiritually and get a fresh infilling. I think we've gotten that. You know, as we sing, we're filled. That's what Ephesians and Colossians tells us. Thank you, Lord.
we just think about that promise from Isaiah, the increase of his kingdom, his government, there will be no end. So, Lord, we thank you for your scepter, your rule, and your reign that is extended even now. We say yes and amen. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth, right here, Yeah, just like it is in heaven. Josh, you want to come? The Lord reminded me of a scripture, Isaiah, uh, not Isaiah, Psalm 147, 3. It says he heals the bo- brokenhearted and he binds up their wounds. And I've, I've been to a lot of memorial services and funerals lately. And I believe the Lord is reminding his people that he specializes in healing the brokenhearted and binding up their wounds. And if you're carrying something that's too big, if if, if you're you're dealing with that kind of a heart issue, something hasn't gone the way you thought it should go, something painful, the death of a dream, death of a loved one, something with your kids, the Lord is here. And there is an anointing, there is a grace to heal the brokenhearted and to bind up your wounds. You don't have to walk out, just like we were, this all ties in. You don't have to walk out the same way you walked in. There is healing. There is hope. There is grace. And I'm reminded, and Charles was talking about the breath of God, the, the Jewish tradition teaches, you know, that God breathed into the nostrils of, of man and he became a, a living being, a speaking spirit, the original language says. And the Jewish tradition is that we are living on borrowed breath. The very breath of God. And when we worship, when we declare his word, when we pray, we return that breath back to God. And and our soul finds its home in him. It finds healing in him that it comes full circle. So that healing for the brokenhearted. This morning as we worship and as we pray, as we receive the word, as we declare the word, God is at work healing wounds that self-help doesn't heal pop culture doesn't heal the medical profession as much as we love them they they can't do it he heals the broken heart and he binds up their wounds amen sounds like the lord's in the healing business to me we'll talk a little more about that um in a minute so, kids, you can go to classes if you don't know that. Now you do. <laughs> You've only been doing it for... Anyway, if you have never, since you've been here, gone to the Welcome Center and signed a little blue card and get a little gift from us. So if this is your first, second, or 42nd time with us, uh, really, I don't say it all the time, please do that. We would love for you to do that. I misread this. Um, we took four days or whatever it was and went to Branson with our kids and grandkids and so (laughs) I don't live at their pace (laughs) and especially with this I don't but anyway we had a great time but (laughs) tired so I looked at the announcements and said that the uh, youth were going to have a nerf night I thought it said nerd night (laughs) and I thought well maybe I'm invited Uh, or no. <laughs> so if you've got, anyway, uh, if you've got the invitation, sorry. Uh, no, this is, they're having a Nerf night on Wednesday in Liberty and they're starting at 6. They're going to have a great time. Thank you for people helping them. And uh, they're getting to do this for 10 bucks a piece. Pretty cool deal. And while they're doing that, we will have a, a class here. We're in the, ca- in the cafe. We're going to do the book of Colossians. Pretty good stuff. And uh, I think that you'll find that interesting. Um, I was told that I should give a, a, a little update. The next one update is that uh, Pastor West is going to be preaching next week. I'm going to be here. He's just going to speak. And then I'll critique him. <coughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. He's kind enough not to do that to me. And, and so... <laughs> 
But um, update on me. I still have, um, I've, I've had shingles, and I've had them now for like for almost 14 weeks. And uh, so I'm still, I got it, and I still have two places on my back, and then from my elbow up underneath my armpit, I still have all sorts of scars and stuff. And where those scars are, we have uh, n- nerves that have erupted. So I'm not dealing with shingles anymore. I'm dealing with the neuropathy caused by it. And uh, I'm better than I was because I'm here. We figured out a way to bandage me up that I can live with and I can wear a shirt, and that's news. <laughs> but I go back on Wednesday for another nerve block, and uh, it's an epidural that they do through your spine. And uh, if this one helps as much as the last one, that would be a really good deal because I've got to get to where I don't have to be bandaged to wear clothing. That's, that just, that's not healed. And so... Uh, that's on Thursday, I think at 1 o'clock, something like that. So anyway, if you feel like praying, that would be a great thing to pray for because I'm ready to do it. I jokingly say, I told the elders, I don't remember if I told you, that, that uh, <clears throat> I told the Lord, hey, I'm ready to get back in the saddle. And I, he's hard of hearing because <laughs> I got back in the battle, not the saddle. <laughs> Anyways, so thank you. <laughs> We're going to talk about most of the things that have been prophesied and spoken this morning. That's wonderful because they didn't know. As a matter of fact, what Michelle said, she didn't know what Charles said. So, and they fit together like that. So I love it when that happens. I, I didn't orchestrate that, but I'm glad he does. Lord, we open ourselves to you. We've sung and prayed and spoken things uh, inviting you to walk into the room. Be yourself and do what you do. And that's so much more than any of us could offer. So Holy Spirit, would you put a penetrating power on the word of God today so that we get what you came to give us. In Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 142, where we're gonna start in... uh, my Bible, it says, prayer for help in trouble. I'd put a bookmark in that one if I were you. Prayer for people for that, who need help in trouble. I cry aloud with my voice to the Lord. I make supplication with my voice to the Lord. Do you notice it says twice that he's using his voice? So he's not whispering and this isn't silent. He's making It's not like God can't hear, but he wants to make sure he does. So I pour out my complaint before him. We're usually too polite to do that. You don't complain to God. You complain to everybody else, but we don't normally normally complain to God. I declare my trouble before him. When my spirit was overwhelmed within me, you knew my path. In the way where I walk, They have hidden a trap from me. I look to the right and see, for there is no one who regards me. No, there is no escape from me. No one cares for my soul. Have you ever said that or thought that? No one cares for my soul. Now, I have really good news for you. That's a stinking lie. But it doesn't mean you don't think it. Or it doesn't mean I don't think it. And so... And you have to realize also, when you think it, you're not the first person who ever thought it. Long time ago, David, who, well, anyway, (laughs) man after God's own heart, uh, the psalmist says, no one cares for my soul. And he's saying that because in the set of circumstances in which he finds himself, in the active present tense, it doesn't look like anybody is caring for his soul. So I cried out to you, O Lord. I said, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. This is really significant. He said, you're my help. You're my refuge. You're my portion in the land of the living. That's like where I'm living right now, not just heaven. True about heaven, because he'll be fully everything to us there. But he said, no, in the land of the living. So give heed to my cry I am brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they are too strong for me.
before me. Now, you need to understand, he's talking about people with swords and clubs and spears, horses and chariots. And he, there are enemies that he can't handle. And don't you ever get into a situation and you think, ah, this is bigger than I am, feeling overwhelmed. Now, I don't know what it means to feel whelmed. <laughs> I've never said, oh, boy, I'm whelmed. But overwhelmed, yes. And so this is beyond being whelmed. This is overwhelmed. I'm making a joke out of that kind of, and thank you for the four that laughed. But (laughs) I want you to see, he says, this is beyond me. And it's beyond anything that I see that can help me. I am overwhelmed. Now listen to me. Most of the time, This isn't a statement, it's a thought. I feel overwhelmed. And your self-talk says, I'm overwhelmed. Right? And it doesn't mean there aren't circumstances that are overwhelming. But you're not in this alone. So he cries out to the one who says, Lord, I know this is supposed to happen like here on the earth, in Kansas City, where, where, where I live. You're my refuge. You're my portion. I get what I get because I'm getting it from you. That's strong. So give heed to my cry, for I'm brought very low. Deliver me from my persecutors, for they're too strong for me. Bring my soul out of prison. He says, I'm imprisoned. Well, he wasn't in jail. Now, it is It's very Possible this is written when he's hiding in a cave. So these are cave-dwelling prayers. I don't know if any of you have ever lived in a cave, but have you ever been in one? You know, the best thing about being in a cave is getting out. (laughs) Right? It's dark. You can't see your way around. You talk, and it talks back to you. (laughs) That happens to some of us anyway, but... (laughs) Sorry. Bring my soul out of prison so that I may give thanks to your name. And it's not that he can't give thanks to his name in prison, but he can't be with others. He can't be in the presence, you know, in the sanctuary that way. He says, I want to get out of here so I can be where I can really do it, where I can do it with others who are doing it, who are praising him. That's so he's not just saying, get me out of here so I can have more money or I can, you know, although I'm sure he's thinking about that too. No, he said, get me out of here so I can fully release what's in me towards you and do it with others. He said, the righteous will surround me for you will deal mountainly with me. So while he's still in the trouble, he says, oh, I'm going to be surrounded by those people, the righteous people who worship because you're going to deal bountifully with me. So he's still in the overwhelming circumstances, but he's prophesying kind of to himself, you're going to be good to me. I'm going to be surrounded by the people in the place where I want to be, in the, in the, you know, in the tabernacle, <laughs> in the temple. I'm going to be there because you're going to deal with me in a bountiful way. And bountiful overcomes the overwhelmed. Right? And so it's really interesting All this happens, he's still not out of the trap, but he's confessing what the Lord will do. So I would tell you that that ability to do that came from the Lord himself, the ability to, while you're in the trouble, say, I know know you're going to do this for me. I know you're going to be you. And I please do that because I'm a little worn out from being me. And it's not so much that God isn't with him. It's that he's in a situation where he's a king and a warrior, and it's pretty hard to be king and warrior in a cave. He's also an incredible worshiper, and he's not able to fully fulfill that commitment or that uh, capacity when he's in the cave. So um, if you have an outline, I put this on the outline that, that this is a cave-dwelling prayer, and even when David is forced 
to live like a criminal, he prays like a king. That's pretty good. (laughs) And you are a son of the king, a daughter of the king. And so even when you're incarcerated, so to speak, overwhelmed, you can still pray like a son or a daughter of the king. We could just go home and that's pretty good. Well, we're not, but (laughs) there's some other pretty good. (laughs) I hope that's, so he's crying out. He prays to be heard. So I don't know how many of you pray silently and there's nothing, nothing wrong with praying silently. And sometimes you're in a situation, that's all you can do because you're with other people or you're at work or, you know, there's so nothing wrong with praying silently, but there are times where you've got to say, oh God, <laughs> or oh God, why have you left me down here in this hole? I did that one day. And he just was really kind to me. He said, you dug it. <laughs> that was the answer. <laughs> and I thought, Holy reality, Batman. (laughs) And I said, uh, I mean, I was at a stop sign. And the sun was shining so brightly, I couldn't see if there was any traffic. So I thought, well, I'm just going to sit here for a minute (laughs) because I don't want to kill them or me. And I was just so fed up, I just cried out. And that's what he said. And I said, well, then get me out of here. And he said, well, I really can't, but I can get in there with you. I mean, that's what I heard. And I said, grab a shovel and come on in. <laughs> and I, I mean, that's kind of what I said. I thought, oh, well, if, if you're in this with me, then I don't have, then it's like I'm not in it anymore. Because it, it doesn't control me, you do. And that's really what he was wanting to do. And so I actually got out of the car and there, I'm, I was on a country road and I just... <laughs> I put the car in park, and I got out of the car, and there wasn't anybody in any, and, and so I just said, okay, <laughs> and I just sang a song, well, and, you know, I was looking three ways, uh, and uh, cause I could hear somebody coming from behind me, and I just thought, it, this was, and I just didn't, you know, like I sang a chorus from a song, I don't remember what it was, but it was like, okay, then the th- only thing for me to do is I need to quit crying out now, and thank you. And, and the answer didn't come immediately to me, but the answer came immediately in me. What I really said was the answer didn't come immediately to me, <laughs> but the answer came immediately in me. Are you with me? That's a very significant thing because you can miss the answer coming to you if you don't receive the answer coming in you. Okay? And so that's the reason I think that he says... He pours out his complaint to God. And you can do that. It's okay to do that. You know, I got too much of this and I don't have enough of this. And, you know, I got too many of these kind of people and not enough of these kinds of people. And, uh, and I, I have a job and a boss, but the job is bad and the boss is worse. You can't say that publicly where people can hear you. But, <laughs> but it's okay to talk to him like that. I don't like this. This is killing me. What are you going to do about it? Which is exactly what he's saying. Now, uh, people ask me all the time, can, can I ask you a question? I said, yeah, but you've got to realize I'm going to answer. <laughs> Sometimes they don't ask that way. You know. That's just a little leadership thing I could give you. <laughs> but you need to cry out to him and you, need, you can ask him questions. You know, I read this passage and this passage and this passage, and why am I stuck like this? He'll tell you. And it's probably he gave you this passage and this passage and this passage because he knew you were going to be stuck like that because he has other things he's doing. Getting out isn't always the best. It's just the most desirable. Right? I think what I really said was getting out (laughs) isn't really the best, but it's the most desirable. It's what we want. I got trouble, I want out of it. I got conflict, I want out of it. 
I have things I have to do that I don't feel like I have the capacity to do and I want to get out of it. That just about touches everybody, doesn't it? And so a good thing to do is to let him know. And uh, actually, if you can pay attention, a car is a real good place to pray because nobody can hear you. You know, it's kind of like praying in the shower. Nobody can hear you. That's what I used to tell kids when they got filled with the Spirit and started speaking in tongues. What, what are we going? How do I, what do I do? I said, do it in the shower. They just think you're singing. <laughs> it's really not a bad idea. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it also means that you're doing it. So. <laughs> so he pours out his complaint to God and he tells him about his trouble. Well, it's not like he doesn't know, but it helps you. It makes you feel better knowing that he knows. So he, <laughs> he declares that even when he was totally overwhelmed spiritually and emotionally, God knew his path. Now, that's a great thing to get a hold of because when you're in that kind of trouble, when you're overwhelmed with things, there's like ah, chaos everywhere. You don't even recognize your path, let alone him knowing it. He said, no, he knows, he knows where you're going. I can remember telling the Lord a number of times, I don't get this. I mean, this, this does not feel like the path of the righteous. <laughs> it's getting lighter and lighter. This feels more like the, you know, the dirt road of the damned getting darker and darker. <laughs> Maybe some of you haven't lived as long as I have. <laughs> it's like, oh, Lord. And... Just doing that sometimes is so, oh, oh, that's in me and it needed to get out of me. And telling him is better sometimes than vomiting on somebody else. That was, yeah, that's good. <laughs> we'll leave that <clears throat> as it is. He says, I'm on this path, trying to walk the path that you gave me and I'm walking that path, and they've set a trap for me. Have you ever been in a situation where people conspired against you? I can show you the knife marks in my back, straight up. And uh, what do you do? I mean, these guys are these guys are against me. And that's what he says. But even when that's happening. The Lord knows his path. Then he next, what does he say? Well, you're my refuge, you're my portion. In the land of the living, you're going to help me get out of this. I don't know how. And the other thing is, I don't know when. And when needs to be like yesterday, if we could work it out. But that's what he's saying. When I'm overwhelmed, when I'm, I can't figure it out spiritually or emotionally or even mentally, and I'm trying to follow you. I'm trying to do what you said I'm supposed to do. And they're still conspiring against me. Wow. And he tells this to the Lord. He says, that's his complaint. Well, actually, it's a proclamation of the truth in the natural realm. But God lives in the spiritual realm. Hello? Hello? And he's looking at that and he goes, well, well, I know what I'm going to do for him. I know what I'm going to do for her. She doesn't know it quite yet and he doesn't know it quite yet, but I know what I'm going to do. And that's the cool part about it. You know, he, he knows. He understands. He knows the difficulty. Uh, here's the hard part. He said he looks to the right because in battle... That's where his wingman is supposed to be. Maverick, you know. <laughs> Trying to be culturally relevant in this situation. But you've got to have the wingman or you're going to get blown up. Right. And he said, I look to the right where my defender is supposed to be. And nobody's there. And I think he had that experience. I mean, I think in real battle... He had that experience because, in other words, this guy's not got my back. And that's trouble. He says, so I looked to where it's supposed to be, and it's not there. 
Haven't you ever looked to where it's supposed to be and it's not there? And that's what he's talking about. He's saying, I, I did what I'm supposed to do and it doesn't look to me like you're doing what you were supposed to do. That's, that's how he feels. And then he just comes to Revelation. He says, wait a minute. You're, gonna, you're my redeemer. You're my provider. You're my defender. You're my fortress. You're my portion in this life. Like in this life. And I'm going to stand on that. And not only that, you're going to free me. I'm going to tell others. And we're going to praise and worship you about it. That's what he's saying. So, good ending. (laughs) Great ending. Once you get out of it. (laughs) Psalm uh, 27, 13 in the Amplified says, What? What would have become of me had I not believed that I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living? Like, he's coming through for me here. Now, it may not take the same shape or form as you had expected. Uh, What Michelle said, uh, Lazarus looked different coming out of the grave than he did getting in it. You know, I still, well, well. When there was the first Easter, they didn't call it that, but we do, and Jesus rose from the grave, and there was a bunch of other guys who popped up out of the grave and walked into town. That's what it says. Doesn't say who they were. Doesn't say who buried them. You know, like, do you go to, go to the funeral director and say, I want my money back? <laughs> I've been waiting all week to say that, so... <clears throat> But these people came out of the graves and went back in to their homes. <laughs> Just, and the, that's all it says. Don't you, don't, I mean, like, today Oprah would go interview those people or something. But you think about that, uh, you, you don't know if they were a bit decayed or if they were cleaned out. I mean, you don't know. And so <laughs> I wish it said more about that. That's why it doesn't say more because we'd all go crazy and make movies and, you know, that kind of thing. But the, the touch on God's earth was so powerful that when Jesus came up, some of the other guys just had to. You see, Jesus knew that when he spoke to Lazarus. He said, Lazarus, come forth, because he wasn't inviting anybody else. But in, in that moment, that wasn't the will of God in the Easter moment, it was kind of like, you know, toasters that just popped up. I mean, I'm not trying, don't you, I mean, what in the world? I mean, you know, here's, you know, a lady fixing lunch and Howard walks in the door, I'm back, mom, you know. I, what, what do you, no, not liver, you know. They had encounters, and then they died again because they aren't still here. So they, they died again. But there was a purpose in proving the resurrection power of the Lord. And he may have had specific people chosen for specific purposes and it, it might have meant something to the families and all that kind of stuff. And, and made, I mean, he does things perfectly. But there was an unexpected touch of what people had prayed for. Hello? And to prove... And I don't know how that managed households and what that did to that group of people and maybe this was their son was going to be a prophet. I mean, you don't know any of that kind of stuff. But it really happened. And it still can really happen. Yeah, and, it, and what would have happened, he said, if I hadn't believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living? I don't know if those guys had prayed that or anything like that. But listen, the kind of stuff that the Lord does for us does resurrect hope, resurrect goodness, faith, healing. And so, well, but what if I die first? Then you're all fixed. Don't worry about it. 
You know, it's said of Polycarp, who was one of the early Christian martyrs, that they were being carried to the post to be tied to the post to be burnt. And the guy, the guy with him, doesn't say who he was, his leg was, had been beaten and kind of broken. He was kind of like Juan. He was all dressed up in his knee and hurting, you know, couldn't, couldn't walk. I mean, really happened. Polycarp looks at him. He said, don't worry. I think the fire will heal us both. Now, I don't know if that's really, really what he said, but that's what I've read that he said. And I thought, no faith in that guy. Wow. But that's true. The touch of God takes care of it all. And, and I'm sure when, if you go to heaven and you've had a bad leg and all of a sudden you're, you're with the Lord, it's like, you're not going to remember you had a bad leg. <laughs> you know, that's not going to be the feature point. Anyway, it's all, it will all be new. Now, when you're down, I don't know about you, Way long time ago, I first got in the insurance business, which I didn't really want to do, but I did because I felt like the Lord told me to do it. And at, in the office, there were several agents, and you'd look for the guys who were down, because if you hadn't had a good week, you want to, you'd go get with those guys and have lunch and talk about what a lousy business this is. And if you had a good week, you'd go out with the guys who also had good weeks and talk about, man, I can't wait till next week, it's going to be wonderful. That's, that's kind of how we are. Here, the psalmist is saying, I'm so low. I don't know how. I always like to say this. I heard Oral Roberts say it the first time about 40 years ago. I was so low, they would have had to jack me up to bury me. Uh, dude, that's low. That's what he's saying. He says, I was so low. I'm brought so low. Harrison says it this way. I pay attention to my cry because I'm low in desperate straits. I like the way the Jerusalem Bible says it. Listen to my cries for I can hardly be crushed lower. Man, if you want to feel bad, read that. If you are feeling bad, you're saying, oh, I love that person. Because it's hard to be cheered up when you're broken. It's hard to be, and people come, oh, everything's going to be okay. Right. Haven't you had people tell you that? And you're in that mode where, unless it happened in the next 12 seconds, I'm still, ugh. I can hardly be crushed lower. Wow. Now, there's a really interesting part here um, that I don't really understand. I mean, I, I kind of do, uh, but... It, it's, he says, I want you to protect me from those who are trying to hurt my inner self. That's, <laughs> now the attack isn't just on his physical life, it's on how he thinks and how he feels and what he believes. That's a strong, that's hard to get over. It really is. Uh, Psalm uh, 143 verse 12 says it this way in your mercy and loving kindness cut off my enemies and destroy all those who afflict my inner self for I am your servant wow now I have not enjoyed having the out outer self afflicted but I'm still cooking on the inner self yeah, but it doesn't mean that hasn't been attacked you understand and I know you understand that too. But he says, protect me from those guys who are not just after my life, they're after my living. They're, a, they're after, they want to make sorrowful the way I live. They want to make me so downhearted and dispirited that I can't reach my destiny. I can't follow through on what the Lord has told me. They, they're after my inner self. That, come on. <laughs> this, is, this is how I think. This is what I believe. This is what I cherish. This is what I love. And they're trying to make less of that, trying to restrain you in that. That's the overwhelming part. When you get to that point where you can't 
be a self-starter. You know what I mean? Somebody's going to have to come along and jump your battery or you're not going to get started because you got, you got hurt in there. You got hurt in there. You know, this is, listen to me, this is where a lot of church wounds come. They get hurt at that level so bad. And they look like they're okay, but if you could, they're not okay. In fact, in fact they're not even O. <laughs> they're just totally dispirited. And the last thing they want to do is to have that person that walks in the door and says, praise the Lord, everybody. I kind of avoid those people too, but uh, I'm not sure what they're on, but... To have a person who's been wounded there is really, you have to be able to bring the grace of God, power of God, and touch it where it's been hurt. Some of us might be that people. Um, I know somebody said, well, I don't go to church because that's where they hurt people. I thought, well, go down to the do drop in. They never do that. You know, come on. Right? <laughs> well, I forget who I heard say it, but it was really good. Uh, might have been Josh. I don't remember who I heard say it. Someone said, ah, oh, the church is full of hypocrites. And whoever it was said, well, there's room for one more. <laughs> that might not have been the most loving thing. <laughs> but Lord, protect me from those who are trying to hurt my inner self. Psalm 138, verse 7 and 8 says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You'll stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. I've prayed that because it's my right arm that got, anyway. The Lord will accomplish what concerns me. You need to write that down. The Lord will accomplish what concerns me. That's why I like the New American Standard so much, because other versions say, the Lord will perfect what concerns me, which means complete, that's good, but you look at it and you think, ain't nothing perfect about this. But the Lord will accomplish what concerns me. I pray that over people all the time, because I don't know what fully concerns someone. Even if I've had a word of knowledge or something, I don't fully know what, what the Lord will, wants to do, and I want him to do what concerns them more than I want to let me have the right word. It's more important. Oh, Lord, the scriptures say you will accomplish what concerns them. Would you take what concerns them and fill it up? That's a good thing to pray even for yourself or for someone else. But the Lord will accomplish what concerns me. And you know, what concerns you might not be the same as what concerns me. I... I was in a prayer meeting one time. We had all these things laid out before us, and some guy started praying for Pakistan. And I thought, but we wrote down the things that concerned us the most. And he prayed. It was wonderful what he prayed, and that's what concerned him the most. And I just had to be straight with him. You know, Pakistan wasn't on the top of my list, but it's going to be on my list <laughs> based on what you said. So it's, I would maybe never prayed about Pakistan for that man. But if I'd have prayed what the Lord, what, that the Lord would accomplish what concerns him, it would be that. Isn't that cool? Without even knowing it. I could, if you pray what concerns a person, even if they haven't told you or can't tell you, the Lord can accomplish it. Uh, yeah, that's, that's right out of the book, man. It really is. <laughs> the... Uh, Along that line, Harrison says this, you exert your power saves me. I like it. The Rotherham says it this way, Yahweh, you will carry through my cause. Oh, Yahweh, your loving kindness is age abiding. It means it's generational. But it also means he's just as good when you're 16 as when you're 116. It's age abiding. Now, I think older people really think that's great. And when I get to be one, I'll think it's great. But he says, your loving kindness is age abiding. Isn't that cool? Now, that's a great thing to pray over people too because you want to go to your kids and your, their kids, and right? 
Pray that loving kindness. And he said, and he's saying that because he's experiencing the loving kindness of God. And he said, oh, even at this stage of my life, you're doing this. And you'll do it. Of course, David had the promise of someone sitting on the throne, you know, forever. He says, you're doing it for me. You're going to be able to do it um, for other people. So the psalmist says, bring my soul out of prison that I may give thanks to you. He's crying out from his imprisoned soul, not just from his imprisoned cave. This is what he's talking about. I may have to stay in the cave, but I don't want to live in one. I don't want it dark. I don't want it mysterious. I don't want it scary. I don't want it unsafe. I don't want it without direction and instruction. Get my soul Bring my soul out of prison. You know, Job describes what this is like in Job 36, 8. He said, we're bound, fettered, and caught in the cords of affliction. Bound, fettered, fettered, and caught in the bonds of affliction. That's what he's saying. And, you know, cords of Sickness or addiction or abuse or depression or bad self-image or doubt or rejection or guilt or shame. He says, these, all, these things try to tie me up. Get me out. Get me out. Bring my life out of prison is what the Amplified says. Well, where do you start? Where do you start? You start, I think, this way. Uh, Psalm 139 Verses 23 and 24. Search me thoroughly, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there's any wicked or hurtful way and lead me in the way everlasting. Knox says this, Lord, see if any, see if on any false paths, paths my heart is set. See if on any false path My heart is set. Isn't that good? So the Lord wants to get every life out of imprisonment that's imprisoned by the world, the flesh, and the devil. He wants to get us out of hurtful ways and get the hurtful ways out of us. Even those who feel crushed, crushed lower than they've ever been, he knows the path that you're on and wants to give you the might and the light to get free, stay free. Yeah, that's, that's the deal. That's what he wants to, to do. And so, um, so pa- if, I, if I pause on this a little bit, it's because my right arm still isn't very good, and when I write stuff down, then I look at it and I thought, what in the world was I trying to say? But uh, Jesse, you and Christina, when we were worshiping, I saw you, and uh, I just felt these words came to my mouth, new instruction and with new direction. Uh, I saw you both holding children and worshiping with one hand, this is about as good as I can do, but one hand in the air, and I thought, wow, uh, he's holding you, and this is so good, your kids had name tags on. And he knows your name. And when he holds you to sing songs of deliverance over you, you got that name tag on. He literally knows your name. So he rejoices in being able to lift you up and sing over you. I, I just think there's a new freedom right in the midst of your circumstances. Amen. New music in the midst of your world. New music in the rush and hurry of your everyday rhythm, new music. And if in any way you're feeling crushed or down or imprisoned, those, that's the singing of the Lord over you to break anything keeping you back and giving you freedom. And I know uh, we had little kids at the same time that were 15 months apart, and it's like, and you got and they got dance lessons and they got all that stuff you know that you got to do that you wouldn't ordinarily do. Then that rush of life, there's that 
<sighs> little breath, and it's got a song in it. And you might even hear the music. I mean, seriously, like you might even hear the music. And I know you sing and play, but, you know, uh, I saw him holding you both, singing over you with your name tag showing. And I thought, oh, that's just like him to do that. It's just like him to do that. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask for you to touch these two individually and together. And, Lord, let the music of heaven. There's, it says, send us help from the sanctuary. It's the real sanctuary in the real heaven where worship is going on 24-7. And I ask, Lord, for you, like, like a burning coal was sent to Isaiah, would you send that harmony of heaven to them and let them feel it, know it, and let it be filled with life that they can accomplish all that concerns them and do it in a way that causes people to know you, that they love you and causes them to know that you love them. Let it be, Lord Jesus. Amen. That was really cool, guys. I mean, it was, I wanted to stop the music, but I thought I'll screw it all up. <laughs> but it was, it, was in, it was like, oh, yeah, what they're doing, they're prophesying to themselves what they're doing, he's going to do for them. And he's not going to stop the world. He's going to do it right in the midst of, yes. you, know, you know, all that stuff, whether it's soccer or dancing or school or, you know, whatever. It, all, the, the, lit, the litany of parenthood. And you can't stop being a parent. I'm 71 and I'm still a parent. Yeah. Okay? I mean, they parent me a little bit too, but... But what the Lord, I just saw that fathering of God on you. And I, I was going to come and just put my hands on everybody. I didn't, didn't want to interrupt the corporate uh, thing, but it was really cool. So anyway, love you guys. Yeah, that was really good. Wow, you guys listen so slow. <laughs> We're gonna, I don't want to kill the child care, so could we stand together, please? Think about what Michelle said and what Josh said, what Charles said, and what the scripture said. He is here to breathe on us. He is here understanding the path we're on and what's in the path. And he has the power to complete your destiny for you to fulfill the things he's called you to do. And, and I know some of you, I mean, I know literally uh, things that haven't happened yet. You know, all that means is that they're coming. Well, what if he doesn't fulfill him in this life? Then it's so fulfilled in the next one, you don't care. And I'm being honest with you. But if you've heard something from the Lord, you need to stand with it. You need to stand and say, I believe that the Lord's going to do this while I'm living in the land of the living. And what if he doesn't? That has nothing to do with it. I believe that he's going to do what he told me he's going to do. And that means whew, this life's going to be jam-packed with stuff upcoming. Well, you know what? It's always been jam-packed with stuff, just not as good as stuff as I'm believing for. So I'm in this with you is what I'm saying. I really do believe that he's going to release what I think is a revival of healing power beyond what we've ever seen. And well, when's it coming? Sometime later today or following. Okay? I mean, I think, you have to, I think you have to take the word of the Lord, what he's spoken to you, and say, well, Lord, it's here. If I didn't hear it right, <clears throat> please correct me. If I'm off on this, if I need to believe in, be believing in a different situation or f- from a different perspective, just give it to me because I want to be in tune with you. I want to be on the same page with you. I want the fulfillment of the things you want to fulfill, not necessarily the things I think you need to fulfill. Right? Now, I want to, I wrote it down in the the journal so many years ago, and I go back and look at that, and I read that, Lord, you told me. This is what you said. And I ask you to watch over your word and perform it. Right? 
then, and you can stand on it, you can sing it, you can pray it, you can say it, you can write about it. I've done all those. <laughs> seen some of it, but now I haven't seen what I think he promised. Amen. And if what I think he promised, if I'm off on that, I'm open for him to change it. But if not, I'm staying with it. You got to, well, why? Well, why not? You know, he alone has the words of life, right? So I'm going to do that, and I invite you to do that. Well, you're, you might create disappointment. I might create fulfillment. <laughs> you can kick the disappointment to the curb. I can't be disappointed too much if I'm believing in the living God who has the power to do way more than I can ask or think. So, and if I'm praying to him and believing that, well then, if that's failure, I'll fail. But I don't think it is. <laughs> I just don't think it is. So Holy Spirit, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you that you are the one. You know the path we're walking in. You know the conspiracies that might be out there against us. You know the disappointment we carry by things not happening already. And you're bigger than all of it. And you're better than all of it. And Lord, I believe you can touch people even right now while we're speaking. Put us in a different place. Give us that music. Like I spoke of Christine and Jesse. Give us that new rhythm to walk with you, Lord. We're, we're in. And we just want to say that we're in. And we believe you. Even though it's, sometimes it's just real difficult when we see the, the, the direct opposite thing take place of what we're believing in. But Lord, we know you're not unsettled and you're not concerned. You're concerned in the way that you love us, but you're not worried about what we're thinking. And Lord, if we think wrong, <clears throat> search me, O oh God, and know my heart. And if I'm on any path that isn't correct, bring correction to me. Bring direction to me. What we want is what you want, not what we think about what you want. We'll love it when we see it come with the fulfillment, Lord. Breathe on us, even right now. Wow. I don't know what this means at all, but I just keep, just when I just prayed that, I just kept seeing a rebar being put down. When you, when you, that's not the fulfillment. That's just something that the, the concrete can grip to so it'll stay in the shape that it's supposed to be in. And it comes before <laughs> the outpouring, if I can say it that way. And so, Lord, I'll just say yes, thank you for that. So, Lord, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for the grace you have to correct our way of thinking if it's not exactly what it's supposed to be. Get us out of prison, Lord. Free us in our thinking to believe what we sing. If we could, if we could come to fullness of believing everything we sang today, we'd be in a different place. So, Lord, we want to be, we, we want to be those who are singing and saying and living same things. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I think we'll stop it there today. So God bless you for being here. I so appreciate you being online. And you know what? We'll be here Wednesday at 6.30, and we'll be here next Sunday. God bless you. Be with us again. Bring somebody with you next time. <laughs>